Mackay. Drop. Go get him. Hey guys, we're back. A uh, week of work, week of parts. So we got parts for this thing, and we got parts for my car. One of the big things that we got is e-stop. We are now a uh, vendor for e-stop. It is an electric emergency brake. So this thing pulls in that way, pulls the brakes, push the button. Really, really cool setup. So uh, we're gonna put this thing in the car and it's gonna make life easy. It gets rid of the handle that barely works on these things. So if you guys are interested in these, call me and uh, we'll get you set up with one. We're also gonna be kind of a little more in depth on the install of this because I'm gonna turn it into a uh, instructional video for people that do buy them and are installing them on Factory 5 Roadsters. So, that's... All right guys, so we are going to get the e-brake set up on this. This is uh, kind of the step through instructions for the e-brake. Uh, first step, I'm gonna identify where parts of this are gonna go. So I'm gonna try to get some light in there uh, and we'll go from there. All right guys, so this might be hard for you to see, but this is where the old mount was. There's there's one, the back of the old mount and the front of the, the front of the mount. Cut that mount out because you really don't need it. Um, you can probably leave it if you wanted to, but uh, we got rid of ours. So this is a T5 transmission. Uh, most people are doing TKOs while they have them, but T5, it's smaller than TKO. I know it'll fit with a TKO with the same exact setup. All right, guys, I want to freeze here for a minute. There are options here. Like I said, you can cut it out. If you guys are adding this after you've already put the handle in, like a retro, you can leave the handle in, and it just won't work, and you can leave this. Or you can do like what we did here and take it out. And now with a big hole that's there, we just used uh, some 40 thou aluminum that we had. We glued it in, covered it in carpet, and can't even tell that it was there. So with that, you can leave the handle in, or you can leave it out. In our case, it was uh, hitting on our seat, so we had to take it out. And then back here, at the back of the chassis, we're going to use, this is the very back of the tunnel, we're going to use these two holes, and that's where the cables are going to come through. So cables come through here. All right, guys, this is the shorter piece of the two aluminum pieces. Uh, you drill a hole right in the middle of, of it, as you can see here. It's a size for the cable end of the linear actuator. All right guys, so you gotta mount this thing as much of an angle as you can get. Um, it doesn't have to be way crazy exaggerated, but as much of an angle as you can get. So get that, rivet it in place, and then uh, that's what we're gonna do next. I, bet they even I know, I do. All right, next we're going to want to lift the transmission brace up in. You can put a bolt in here or two just to kind of hold it in place. You don't necessarily have to. Um, there's enough adjustments on the brackets themselves to be able to do this. But you want to get it pretty close. Um, I, yeah. And then when you get this in place, you want to go and grab the actuator. And you want to feed the actuator up through the bracket that we just uh, installed. I put the nut about halfway down the adjustment on it. So feed it up in there, uh, get it, and then put the nut on the other side, secure it down. You don't have to tighten it with a wrench right this second because we're going to be taking it back out. But you want to hold it in place because this is what gives you the, this is what gives you your measurement and your markings that you're going to put onto the, uh, onto the transmission tunnel. So. When you get that and you get it all secured, and now we're going to do some measuring and marking and that kind of stuff. I've got it tied into where it needs to be here. So. Uh-huh. 
like it. I like it a lot. Uh -huh. Let's just do it this way. Somewhere in the middle, right? If we do this, we put one right to this side, between here and here. I like that all out. And then about there, that's not gonna go nowhere. Go ahead. Let's see what we got here. Alright guys, so here's the rear portion of the mount. We'll be able to pick up this flange. So all we got to drill is through this bar and just pick up that guy there. So I've marked the front of it where the front ends. And I've come down here and this is the end. And it's going to kind of sit on the bar here. But with the kit, I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you a piece of angle iron to be able to put the angle iron through this bar and then down through there and just hold it off enough to where it doesn't touch. We'll have to make, here, we'll just do that measurement, right? Okay, that's going to go over that way. That's not touching there. That's not touching here. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Okay. Okay. Oh, hello. All right. So see, we drew a Sharpie mark on the bottom of the thing so we can line it up. See how it's, we got a gap here. Our transmission's going to go that way some more. So we've got a gap there, especially when I pull this over here, everything's going to miss. So, all right, so we're gonna take it out, we're gonna drill the holes, and this portion will be finalized. All right, guys, this is just a straight hole for here, so. All right, this is the longer of the two aluminum angles that are included it with the kit. The shorter one went that we've already installed, and then this one. All right, guys, when you do this, take, take the flat edge that's going to go up top. Hold it up top. All right, guys, don't do this the way that I am showing you in here. As you notice, the flat side is actually on the bottom. Uh, the angle piece needs to be rotated around. You want to make it flat with the opposite side of the tape. So you'll see here in a minute that I get it correct, but I actually drill this wrong. So make sure you flip this around when you're doing this. Whoa. There. Find your center. And then drill your points in from there. Does not have to be, it does not have to be perfect. All right, guys, so make sure that uh, this is flush across the top. Use the 7 16 nuts. All right, now. Take this guy. Drill 
drop wash, washer nut or washer bolt through. Put a washer nut on the other side. Get that one snug up at the top where at your mark that you made. And then run this one down. Here you can take some vice grips. Hold it in place on your marks, flip it over, take a sharpie, somewhere in between these guys, boom. Take a shorter bolt that you get in the kit. It goes up through here like this. All right, get your tools, whatever you're gonna use. Also known as click click height. All right, guys, don't be an idiot like me. Um, cut these ferrules. Cut these ferrules off before you put them in the car. Especially if you got carpet in like we do, because now I'm just going to make a mess. So yeah. Your uh, things down around four of your feet. Yeah, it's not. All right, guys. All right, guys. You gotta, you gotta take this and you gotta drill out the ends of it, so that the cable. You have two. You have two options. You can take the black plastic coating off the cable, and then you don't have to drill these out. Or you go and you get an. An 1160 force drill bit. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna drill them out that way. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now make sure you get your top cable on the top side of this with them facing that way because we gotta be able to tighten them, so. All right, what we didn't mention is on the uh, on the actuator, if you take the actuator and you put the cables on a 12 volt source, you wanna, just depending on how you put them, it'll run it in or it'll run it out. So put it to where you run the cable all the way out. this 
thing away from. What is that? Ten? Ten mil? Because it's a metric. Mm -hmm. Ouch. And a pair of pliers. All right guys, so if you, uh, this is where we just need to start making some basic beginning adjustments. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna pull the cables as tight as you can by hand and then crimp them or tighten the set screws really well. Um, if you left the sheeting on, you need to tighten them well because they will slip. If you took the sheeting off and you went through that hassle, you still need to screw them down pretty hard so that they are, they are tight. And you might have to do this adjustment back and forth as you go through and adjust the brakes and go on and on. Um, I don't really go into a whole lot of it because it's pretty self-explanatory on how to adjust the brakes from here. All right guys, so uh, we've got it mounted. We've got the wires run for our car. So you just need to get your wires up into the dash and then We've gone and I like to use these. They're called Dean's plugs. They're from the RC airplane world, uh, but they're high voltage and they slip together easier than that. Do you need to put a connector? Can you just solder them together, or butt splice them together? Sure. Um, I like to put this easy connector just in case we need to move the box, which we've just Velcroed to the wall. I'll put a little bit of, I'll put a dab of silicone here and here just to hold it. Drill a hole for a button. The button's gonna go right here. And now here's where things get a little different. All right, so off our box, we have three wires, these three wires. Black, of course, is ground. Red is going to go to a battery source. We're actually gonna use, can you see it down here? We're gonna use this guy. This is our courtesy lights. So we know it's battery. This thing doesn't take a whole lot of amperage. If I need to, I can up this uh, fuse and make this work. This is a guy that we are not going to hook up. Um, with this hooked up, when the ignition is on, you can't activate the button. So the brake won't release. The brake won't release if the car is running with the ignition on. So we're not gonna hook this button up. Now, that's not the way they do it. It's not the way the instructions say to do it. And all it is, it's a safety feature. So you can't engage the emergency brake with the car running. So um, we're willing to take that risk. So that's the way we're gonna do it. You guys can do what you want. This other little green button, or green button, is a green wire. You can hook it up to like an LED, which we might do. We might actually hook it up to, we're probably gonna hook this up to our dash so on our digital dash, it, uh, it will show brake when the brake is installed. This LED on here shows that the brake is working also. You just, the instructions will show you how to do that. Too. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna finish wiring this thing up and then we're gonna test it. All right guys, we got the electrics hooked up. Uh, we've mounted our switch here underneath we don't want to see it, so that's why we put it here. But as you can see down here, let's see if we can get some focus. Ooh, there we go. All right, so we're gonna press the switch. This is engage. And 
disengage. Cool. Uh, we'll do so if you. There's a light, so if you when you press it, it's gonna blink while it's uh, doing its thing. And then this will go off after a little bit of time. But you can just... So there you go, guys. So what's left, and I'm not going to show you this because you guys can do it too, but once you engage it on here on the very bottom, let's see if I can see this. Down here, there's a little plug that you want to do, so you engage it. Well, right now we're going to adjust it, and then if your if your rotors are still spinning while it's engaged, you need to adjust the little spin thing in here. And you stick a screwdriver, and you push it, and it will. Uh, it's got like little cog wheels on it, and you put a screwdriver in, and you just keep going until it gets tight. You want them to drag just a little bit when it's disengaged. So, all right, guys. So if you are finished with the install. That's it. It's good to go. You need to do the adjustment. Um, if you have any issues, uh, e-stop is really super easy to get a hold of, super easy to work with. So uh, if you have warranty issues or that kind of stuff, call them and they will get you all hooked up. So thanks for the purchase. And if you have any questions on the install, please send me an email, give me a call, and we'll work our way through it, uh, like on the electric sides, that kind of stuff. So thank you guys. Bye.